you're stirring at. I can tell what you're thinking. I can tell by the look on your face. You're thinking, look at her, pregnant at 14, probably had a bit too much to drink and thrown herself on some lad. Well, get this right. While you lot are all giving up your jobs for your kid, she'll be able to start her career at 20 by the time the kid's in school. Well, actually, I was thinking where you got that dress from. New look. I'm sorry, she thought you were going to have a go. Well, it's nothing to do with me, is it? It's your life. I can't see clearly now But I sure as hell know what I'm looking for If you breathe You better know what you are inhaling I need food I'm ready for my viewers Kira Knightley She's so thin. Bet she's got that bulimia. Mum, I think you mean anorexia. She's only a kid. Shocking, that. Bet her parents are out of their minds. I bet they're just glad that she's famous and making loads of money. It's more to life than money, love. And my pyjamas clean? Yes, love, they're on your bed. And I've washed your head as well. What? You can't do that. It's going to fall apart. I washed him very carefully in the sink. Mum, don't tell Zelviga when she comes round that I still have my teddy, will you? Zelviga? What kind of a name's that? How old is she? Well, that's what we call her. She's my age. And where does she live? She lives at the back of us. And where do you know her from? Mum! I'm glad you've made a new friend. Our friend, you mean? Well, you've got loads of friends. No, we ain't. But me and Zelviga will really get on. Well, if you want your friend to start coming round, Natalie, you've got to start acting a bit more mature. More responsible, love. Nah, it's too hot in here. It's alright if we go. Yeah, see you in a bit. See ya. And if you see Jimmy, don't tell him anything, will you? Will you? I hate him. Just ignore him. And if he says anything, don't, don't tell him. No, I won't. You see that girl over there? She's only about 12. She's our paper girl. No way. She might be here for STD clinic. That's on today, I know. That's even worse. Still means she's at it. Come on. Hey, you, you dirty little slapper. Been had it on your paper round or something. <laughs> hey, you left! So I coaching late. Um, do you need to spin in my case again? It's not my problem, Bex. Now, come on. Get warmed up and then join those guys down on the cones. Remember, sweetheart, you're lucky to be on this team. Soz, coach, what happened again? Soz, Soz, Soz isn't good enough. Frankly, your concentration stinks of late. I've seen your Janine move faster than you. And that's saying something. I thought I would good last week. That was last week, Bex. Now, come on. Get on with it before that bloody sun goes down. Soz, coach. What's the matter with you? Ask me somewhere. You should have thought of that before. Before what? Jess, the health visitor will see you now. Hi Jess, how are you? Fine, thanks. How did your exams go? I think I did all right. Oh, God, so it's just a waiting game now, isn't yeah. it? The results will be out soon. Yeah. Have you brought your red book with you? Yeah. Great, thanks. So Kyle's about eight weeks now, is that right? Okay. And how's the breastfeeding going? It's much easier you now. I've managed to express a bit more milk, so Scott can help with the nighttime feeds. Oh, that's good. So at least you're getting some sleep now, aren't you? Okay, is so he ready for weighing? Yeah. Have a look at you, Kyle. You are getting a big boy now, aren't you? Yeah, I'll see how heavy you are this week. There we go. Right, he's doing really well. He's five kilograms, which is about 11 pounds. Turn that down a bit, please. I can't read. Got downstairs and leave. 
Anyway, does your dad know you're here? I don't want him on my case. He likes you, babe. He's just a bit protective, that's all. Likes me? He wants me dead. He's only being nice to me because you're off to uni and leaving me. Don't mean you're cleverer than me, you know, because you read books and you're good at exams and stuff. I've got other talents. Yeah, I know. Anyway, I'd never leave you. I bet you wish I was more like you, don't you? Do I? I could hate that. Have you got some money for me phone? Did you get some off your mum? Yeah, but I've had to use that on records. Come on, Jess. I know, but I'm skin. Well, I can't use my wages. That's for my car. Then you get some money from that gig last week. Yeah, but I've got to use that on my trainers that I saw, Jess. I've got to look good. That's all part of it. Can't all be my smarty pants like you going off to uni. Shut up. Come on, just think. When I've got my car, I'll be able to do gigs all over the place and come and see you up at uni. Yeah, but you better pack it in. Cheers. When you get that car. So that's lovely. Okay. This following is lying beautifully. It's just where it should be. There. Okay. So well done. The breastfeeding's obviously working. He's doing really well. And how are you? How's your dad? Has he calmed down yet? Not really. Did you enjoy that? Yes, thanks, Pete. That was very nice. Cheers, mate. I'm stuffed. You certainly are. Hey, Megan, go put the cat on. Should we tell him about our little surprise? Yeah, I'm gone. I hope we get it ready. What surprise? Oh, I what's this then? I don't believe this. I thought he'd go for me today. He went out early with your mum. She must have calmed him down or something. My mum's dead chuffed. She loves babies. We did the right thing telling them straight away. Right. Well, we've got our heads together to see how we can give you the best possible start in life. Now, your mum says that you've been saving up for a car. Is that right, Scott? Yeah. Well, I admire that. So much so that I've made a contribution to your savings and I've got you a set of wheels. Now, you can't use them just yet, but you can certainly have a look. Don't thank me either just yet, because I ain't finished. We've got your little flat in the centre of town, so you can walk everywhere, you won't need a car. To cap it all, I've got your full-time job on the sock stall in the market. So by this time next September, when my darling princess goes off to university, everything will be running like clockwork. This will be the making of you, this. You're going to be a father and a good in. You know, I can do it, anybody can. So, have we got that straight? Dickhead stays home here to look after the baby, but my darling girl goes off to university to earn herself a career. You're going to love father and son. Not bugger off before I strangle you. Kids left home, ma'am. Yep. See ya. See ya. May as well finish that off, love. You're eating for two now. How could you do that, Dad? It's like you're forcing him to stay with me or something. I'm forcing him to stay with you and forcing him to stay with the baby. But what happens if I don't want to go to uni? I might not want to go after the baby's born. You won't want to go when the baby's born, but you're going. And you'll thank me in time. For what? Ruining my life? Making my boyfriend feel like shit? There's more to life than having a degree, you know, Dad. Have, have I embarrassed you or something? What do you want? I just want what's best for you. You're talking about my life. My life's been really good. Me and Scott love each other, and we said we'd be together forever. Nana and Grandad were together for 48 years, and Nana had you at 16. She had no choice, she had to. Why did her dad force my granddad into being with her? She had no option. You do. Yeah, I do. But if I don't want to go to uni, Dad, that's my choice. You were going to university if it's the last thing I do. Now then, Jess, you're a lot smarter than me in loads of things, but when it comes to parenting, you've got a lot to catch up on. But you will. You will. And he still thinks I'm going to uni after I get my results. I'm not spending any time away from Kyle, but that doesn't seem important to Dad. But what is important, Jess, is that you do what you think is right for you. Not for your dad, not for Scott, not even for Kyle, but for you. And that'll be the right decision. 
I don't want to throw away my chance at uni. I know exactly what an amazing opportunity I have. But Leeds is just too far away. Well, can't you study law somewhere else? Well, I only put one choice down because Dad wanted the best. Well, what about Manchester University? They do law there, don't they? And I'm sure they've got a crash facility. You could apply for care to learn funding, which would mean that you get your childcare paid for while you study. There's a leaflet there all about it. I could ask our connections worker to sort a place out for you if you like. I'm sure your dad does care about you, Jess, but maybe it's time that he listens now to your feelings and supports you with going to Manchester, if you feel that's what you want. Thanks, Sue. Like you say, it's my decision. I'm not going to let him ruin my life. I'll have a really good think about it, and I'll see you next week. OK, Jess, take I don't know if you'd come round our race for tea sometime this week. Yeah, whatever. Ah, you seen Jimmy? He's after Bosch, isn't you? No, yeah. He is not. He well fancied you, cos, like, you're the new girl and he's had both of us. <laughs> Do you want me to set you up with him? No, it's all right. Oh, why? What sort of school in case your mum might find out? Mummy's girl, I heard she still picks you up from school. No, she don't. Oh, my gosh. Does she? How embarrassing is that? I bet she's never even been with anyone, has she? You're going to have to up a bit if you want to hang around with us. I bet you don't even know what a 69er is. <laughs> yeah, but you've never even uh, noshed anyone off before, have you, you little slapper? Leave her. She don't have to get off with him if she don't want to. He picks his head anyway, he gets on her nerves. I like him, but I don't know him. He's nice, honest. Look, he's looking over there. Just go up and talk to him. <laughs> yeah. And give him this from me. Go on. Go on. Go on. Go on. Just stir it up. Go, Go on. on. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> you alright? Yeah, it's always grass me give you this. Hug me. That's nice, isn't it? It ain't off me. So what's your name? I haven't seen you with them lot before. Natalie. Natalie, that's a nice name. Do you like my car? Yeah. Do you fancy coming for a ride? I don't know. So right, you can ask one of them for come with you if you want. Just go for a drive on or something. I'll drop you off home after. You can't drop me off at the front door though. So right, I'll drop you out in the corner or something. Okay, then just for a ride. I'm not like that. Like what? Get it, man. Tell her that we boshed him for. For a laugh, that's what she'd say. That's well tight. Shut up. Yeah, whatever. Where have you been? Um, I've been worried sick. Where? Oh, just don't. Been worried sick about you, Natalie. Listen, Mum, I'm going to the pictures on Saturday at Zellwiger and I don't need a lift from you. Zellwiger? What's her real name anyway? And you're not going unless I can pick you up and that's fine, or Natalie. Right, then I won't go. I hate you. I'm sorry for saying I hate you, Mum. I only want to go to the pictures with my friend. Oh, I'll see. 
Thanks, Mum. I think I've sorted it. That's good. Yeah, I told her I was going to the pictures with Zoe. Go. You don't have to, you know. I'm happy just going for a ride in the car and that. No, I do want to. You're not being pushy. I mean, it's three months now. We've been seeing each other and I feel tight now. And because you want to, don't you? It's got, it's got like a pushing stuff with me being older than that. And I mean, I really like you that. I mean, you're 16, we can go out properly. I want us to go out now. But you can't tell anybody though. We can get into a lot of trouble over this. And you wouldn't ever get to see me again. No, I do. I make all my own decisions. I'm a big girl now. I'm not a baby. Pick me up around the corner, okay? Okay. I love you, you know. I love you. Bye. Things are different now, Ted. I have loads of friends, and I'm going out with Jimmy. I want to tell you a secret. We're going for a romantic evening on Saturday. We're going for something to eat, and then we're going to do it in the in the car on the hills. I love him, you know. It's real love, and he loves me as well. He really loves me. If I tell him no, she'll only say I'm too young for boyfriends, and she won't understand. It's just a secret between me and you. Janine Morrison, you're next in with the midwife. Okay, thanks, but I'm not Janine, I'm Becca. Tells at Asda, I'm only here because my van's off the road. That please! Listen, I'd rather drink canal water than deal with it. You deal with it, and you lot out! Come on! Move! What do you want me for? We shut that front door. What's up? What's up? What's up? Oh, you've no idea, Becky, have you? This is now the only way I'm comfortable. I'm sick and tired of being pregnant. We've got three months to go, so I suppose. Are you trying to say I'm going over the top? I'm not saying that, Jane. You've actually no idea what I feel like. It's like torture. I'm sick of carrying this bloody thing. That's not very nice. Oh, just do my nails, will you? Your nails? My toenails. Can't do them myself, can I? I feel like I'm in prison here. It's too hot and I can't breathe. I'm so out of here when I get the house. No way I'm stuck in here any longer. Did you repent on purpose so I can get flat? Well, Bex, you've got to be sensible. Use your head, no to with the system. Here, I need you to take this to the midwife for me. And this. Tell her I sterilised it. I'm not to the pillow for you. Have you not just been listening to a single word I've said? I'm in pain. Can you not just understand what I'm going through? She only comes once a week and I can't miss her. What time's the appointment? I have two and don't be late or you'll be sat there for ages. Make sure you come back and tell me what she said. <laughs> Must have seen herself in the mirror. I know. She deserves everything she gets to slap her. Just get out and leave me alone. Can you not see I'm ill? Do you want a slap? Slap at the tap. Just can't believe a poor kid mm. has to be brought up by Janine, the biggest slag of the school. I feel sorry for it already. So, pick on my sister. Look, Becky, it's got nothing to do with you, all right? Yeah, your sister's a slapper. What can you do? Slag. Looks out with her. I didn't know you were seeing him, did I? Whatever, when you're at home with your stretch marks and your screaming kid, I'll be at Club with Jake, so... Well, great, stop calling me names then. Slapper!
Look, Becky, it's got nothing to do with you. Why don't you tell someone? I already did. Right, Janine, if you'd like to come in. Hi, Janine. Uh, my name's Florence Hatton. I'm the Teenage Pregnancy Reintegration Officer and I'm here to help you with your pregnancy. I believe you've had um, some problems at school. I'm not going back there. People keep calling my names and everything. Yeah. I'm not going. Mm. I, I can understand how you feel like that. It's just bullying. But I can work with the school and get that sorted out for you. Don't worry about that. You know, that needs to be sorted and you can't just ignore it. Um, do you know all the different options that are available to you? Well, the teacher said there's a young mum's unit and they said it'd be best for me, so I should go there, really. That is one option and it's a great place. You'd absolutely love it. But you don't need to... A, you don't need to make up your mind now. And there are other options. You could go to the young mum's unit. You could go to the young mum's unit part-time. You could go into school for a particular subject you like. Um, or you could go into school full-time, we could sort out all your problems and you can go back to school full-time if you want. Um, is there a subject you really like at school that you'd like to carry on with, for example? I like doing art. If you like art, we can arrange for you to come into school just to do art, say one day a week or something. Uh, I can talk to your art teacher and get that sorted out for you. Uh, would you fancy that, do you think? Yeah? You sure? Yeah. Also, obviously it's early days yet, but you need to start thinking about childcare. There is a nursery in the unit, which you could use if you were in there, but also you're entitled to take the baby to any nursery in the country and have a free place if you're going to school. So you could take the, the baby to the nursery at the end of the street where the school is, if that's what you wanted to do. There's a lot of different things to decide, so if I give you this to have a look at, it, it might help you just think things through and make your mind up. Um, I think it's difficult to, to decide whether you want to go to Young Mums until you've actually seen it. So what we could do is go down there now, if you like, and have a look and see if it appeals to you, and then we can go through all your different options and all the help and support that's available to you. Do you fancy doing that? Um, do you want to go now? Because I've got my car outside. I can take you now if you like. It's not far. Right. Is there anyone that you'd like to come along with you? Because I can go and pick them up. No, just me. Janine Morrison. Oh, I'm sorry, I was expecting somebody else. Yeah, but it's me. I'm my sister. She wasn't feeling very well, so she asked me to come down to see you. What, for her monthly checkup? Well, yeah. Well, what about her weight? What about her blood pressure? And I need a urine sample. I've got it here. Well, I can't test that. She's washed it out. Look, I need to make sure that she's OK at this stage. I need to weigh her. How about if you weigh me times that by two? She's about that at the moment. No, no. You'll have to make another appointment for next week. I need to make sure that she's all right and I need to see her. Hang on, she's giving me not to read out. Can't sleep, my head's pulsing every time I sit down. Backache, swollen ankles, still feel sick. Can't breathe, can't walk properly. Eyes are blurry, crying a lot, especially at adverts. Very, very upset, very tired. Can't sit properly, can't lie properly. Had to get up five times the night for a wee, then wake up at five and can't get to sleep. Come downstairs crying, make tea and then throw up. Just totally fed up with it. Also getting kicked in the face, which I can't do anything about. Well, everything seems normal then. But seriously, I need to make sure she's OK. These antenatal checks are to make sure that her and the baby are fine. So tell her to expect a visit of me in the next couple of days. I'll do a home visit. OK, see ya. Stop scratching! Everyone's looking at you! I can't help it! What type of receptionist that you be on? I've got a 
go on a bit an STD. What name is it? Herpes, I think, but it might be crabs. I thought it was a bandit first, not like uh, a right idiot. No, uh, what's your name? Oh, sorry, Emma Jane Pearson. Okay, Emma, the nurse will call you in a minute. Just take a seat. Yeah, look at that leaflet. Oh my god, what a sight is that what I've got? I don't know. Does it look like that? It does a bit, yeah, but not as much. It's not there, it's all here. Stop it. Anyway, I don't think it's that. That's syphilis. I don't think he's got that, but you never know. So what happens after you get your sores? Read it. Right, the secondary stages of syphilis are a non itch rash covering the whole body. Flat, whitey looking groves are in the vulva and white patches on the tongue. Have I got them? No, but you need a filling. Oh, something else to worry about now. I've looked for herpes then. Here we are, herpes. Remember after treatment for our herpes, always use a condom during sex. I didn't need one. Yo, oh, you're such an idiot, Emma. I told you to get one of these cars, didn't I? All you do is go up to the counter. It's better than scratching like a mangy cat. I did warn you. Stop it. Charlie works at record shop, John. John with the bedder? No, we didn't read it stark. Good looking. Big brown eyes, long glasses, John. Does he hang about with Jaden? No. Anyway, I'll see Mark Pierce's party right he goes. You and a Pierce's sister and I go, yeah? So we got chatting. He is fair. I suppose we were at 10 on Saturday, you know him. John, what's his second name? At Mick Baker's party? Yeah, he says something like sticks or something. Oh, you know what I mean? He says sticks. He started chatting and he ignored you. Six. Dead nice looking, big eyelashes, six. Six, John Six. That ain't his real name, you know. Are you meeting him? Why, is he seeing someone? Is he a heck? Why? He's six degrees, ain't you heard of him? He says to be dead cold with you or something. No, right. There's this thing, yeah, and it's about how far away you are from knowing a famous person. So it's like, say my mum works at the show and the manager's boyfriend works at the MEN Arena and met take that. So that makes me five degrees away from knowing Gary Barlow. John knows Gary Barlow? No, right. Do you know anyone that met anyone or knows anyone famous. My auntie Maggie's daughter's met Beyonce. Well, that makes you three degrees away from knowing Beyonce. All oh, right. I don't get it. Right, all his mates he hangs around with have all been with each other and they've all got herpes from Debbie. We call them the six degrees, right. John slept with Jenny, who slept with Sam. Sam? Who slept with Server, who slept with Kyle. Who slept, slept with Debbie. Debbie? Debbie? Who slept with a waiter in Spain all day who had herpes. Six degrees of herpes is the full name. He is fit though. No, he's all right. I work with Gwen away, I just wonder if you knew him. You've already bossed him, haven't you? No. <laughs> well, tell you what, why don't we go to the record shop and you can go and chat him up. You yeah, might get herpes whilst I've been there. Have you got it? Is it good? <laughs> Emma, you're, you're such, such a div. div. I know you like status quo. They've been serious. I was looking for my dad. Why, have you lost him? No. I was looking for a band called Herpes and a song's called Six Degrees. Shut up! Oh, it's a song called Herpes. You said it was! I know someone who's got herpes. Did I borrow it? That's Charlotte. She's the one who's got it. I haven't got it. What does it mean? Do you even know what herpes is? Are you being serious? Hey, Emma. I haven't got it, alright. Charlotte's got me mixed up. It ain't me, it's John Thomas that has it. Do you like swimming? Yeah. I'm going tomorrow around 10, you fancy it? I might do, yeah. I told you, I didn't need none of these condom cards. You read out the symptoms. All right. An itch not tingling sensation in the gentle or anal area. Got that. Small, fluid filled blisters, these burst and leave small sores, which can be very painful. In time, they dry it and scab over. Oh my god. 
but with the first infection, they can take between two and four weeks to heal properly. A pain when passing you around. I haven't got that. If it passes over the sores. Yeah. I think it's crabs me. I must be not beat. I have a look for crabs. Oh, uh, no chance. I have a look yourself. I mean in a leaflet. Right. Oh. Here we are. Public lice. They look like crabs though, don't they? Look at them horrible little monsters with pincers. Stop scratching. What, just they're just reading, will you? Public lice are tiny insects about the size of a pinhead. They are grey or brown in colour and lay eggs which act into lice after seven days. Great, that's what it is. Public lice attack... Pubic lice attack stronger to hers and do not brush off with normal cleaning. Too right. You need close contact to pass on pubic lice to others. Sexual contact is a common way. However, you may catch pubic lice by hugging someone with a beard or moustache. So move over to that seat and don't hug me. Cheeky cave. Natalie, the nurse will see you now. to talk to you about it, but what's this? <laughs> Get out. Where? Where can I go? I can't go. I don't care. I don't want to know. Just get out. Get out. Get out. What's the matter now? My mum's just found me out. Oh, goodness. Come on, love. just found out I'm pregnant and my mum's gone mad. She's thrown me out. What can we do, Jimmy? Do, do you know where I live? No, why? Can I move in with you? Right. Don't ever phone me again. And I mean it. If anyone finds out hold him, I'll go to prison. Don't ever phone me again. Are you okay? Alright. Have you had a chance to talk to your mum about any of this yet? No, not really. You know, I know it's difficult talking to your mum about stuff like this, but if you want, you can bring her in and we can talk to her together. It's no point. She don't want to know. Oh. Is there anyone else that can support you through this? Yeah, my next door neighbour, Ethel. Okay. Right. Um, can you remember the date of the first day of your last period? Well, I looked at it, it was the 10th of June. Right. Um, according to this, you're seven weeks pregnant. I understand from your notes that you've been considering a termination. Have you had a chance to think about any of the other options? You know, have you thought about continuing with the pregnancy? I can refer you to the teenage pregnancy team and they'll give you support throughout and after your pregnancy. Or there's always, you know, adoption. I can refer you to the right teams, but whatever you decide, we'll be there to support you. I think I've made my mind up. All right. Well, it's not the nurse's role to refer people for a termination, but I am here for any advice or support that you want. What I need to do is get you an appointment with the doctor at the parallel, and he'll listen to what you've got to say and refer you straight away. Then I'll give you a phone number that you need to ring the next day, and they'll give you an appointment. It's normally about two weeks, usually less than that. What happens next? Well, then you'll be referred to either a local hospital or a private clinic, but don't worry, it's at no cost to you at all. What they'll do is they'll give you a scan, then uh, they'll give you a tablet. Yeah. Then you need to go home. You'll come back two days later and they'll give you another tablet, but you'll need to stay in this time so they can keep an eye on you. The tablet takes about four to six hours to take effect, and then when the nurses are happy that you're all right, 
then you can go home. Oh. I know you've made your mind up about this termination, but if at any point you change your mind, I mean, even right up to the last minute, you must say so. All the nurses are trained to deal with that kind of stuff. They're very understanding, yeah? So nobody will think bad of you. Yeah. And I need you to keep coming back for contraceptive advice and just to check that you're all right. Well, I won't be making the same mistake again. Do you understand everything I've said? I think so. All right. Yeah. Well, here's some written information that you can take with you. It's all very clear. And if you need to get hold of me for any reason at all, just give me a ring or a text, OK? Thanks. Well, I've had a word with her, and, uh She's not very happy. But don't worry about that now. She'll come round. She will. Anyway, uh, she's asked me if I give you this. Becky, where are you off? Hell's in for Why well, can't she go south? She's Liz Cow. What you want this time? A house. I've, I've got to go, Liz. I'll be late. Right, see you later. See you later. Bye. Bye. Hi, Janine. Come in, sit down. How can I help you? I'm Matt Janine. I'm her sister, Becky. So, what do you do then? I am a resettlement officer. I work with young families 16 to 20 and I support them to live successfully in properties in the community. Where's Janine? She, she feels ill, so she sent me instead. But well, she told me that, that she wants to bed your house. Can I just stop you there, Becky? Um, first of all, I really do need to speak to Janine, but what actually she wants and what actually can actually happen might actually take well over a year. I see from her details she is registered from home to you and she is expressing interest in properties. But, like I said, it can take well over a year for her to be offered a property. She's not going to like that. It's crowded at home. Well, if she's overcrowded at home and she can no longer stay there, we can consider a mother and baby unit. But it can take up to five, six weeks for the referral and assessment to be made. And then there could be a waiting list. Living with other people, screaming kids. She wants to live on her own, away from the rest of us. The situation is she does have accommodation. So therefore, she's not actually homeless. If there's a problem with the par your parents, we can actually offer mediation service or I can actually come in and speak to your family. No, they haven't fallen out. It's just, it's overcrowded. Right, what she needs to do, she needs to check this each week and she needs to express interest in the properties. But if I tell you, it can take time, it can take well over a year for her to be offered a property. Is it true that the council gives the sound seekers the houses before local people? It isn't fair that. Janine's a DUR life. No, Becky, that's not true. Everyone gets treated fairly. I, I do want to help Janine, but she has to understand that there's over 23,000 people on the housing registry in Bolton, and that is a lot of people. But each week, there's over 80 people who express interest in property. It will take time, but she does have to be patient. She's got to kick off about that. Janine says, if you have a kid, do you get a house? Like I said, Janine's going to have to come and see me. I'm going to have to discuss the situation. But we can use the time that she's waiting to prepare for her to move into the house and help solve any issues she's got with the care of the baby. Thanks. But she's not going to be very happy. See ya. Alright then. The thing is, I don't even have crabs. Hey, you, you little rebel. You're in the bath, aren't you, with that lad? 
It was pretty fit. Has it got a phone number? I don't know what you're talking about. I only got chlamydia off 20 different people, and you're one of them. Who well, told you that? Zell told us, didn't you? Well, only because my cousin seen you with him at the baths, and she said it was so obvious that you were boshing him. I've not even slept with him. I only went swimming with him. What's all the scratching about then, you dirty cow? Well, I said it would do me shaving with Keenan for front razor. I don't want her to poke at my cousin when I went swimming with him, so that could be either. Ooh, you hanging bitch, scratching your sweaty bits in public using a rusty razor. I saw we go. Do you want me for a wish? <laughs> Have you heard H talking to me like that? Yeah, I know. Who the hell do you think you are talking to my mate like that? She's one of my chlamydia. No, I didn't. Yeah, you did. I went with you when you took the pill. Now, do you want me for a pay show? <laughs> Take one of these cards before you go. You just go up to the counter. They don't say nothing. They just give you the condoms. It's just in case you do ever bosh him. But I'm not saying you have to. OK. Well, the nurse gave me a prescription for rotated skin and they said, make sure you get new razors. Come on, numbers go. Panic over. Come on in, look. Sit down. Get this letter open. We're all on tenterhooks. So where's it going to be? Oh. Brilliant, brilliant, ah, brilliant. So you are going to leave, just what we wanted. Yeah, well done, Jess. It's real good, that, isn't it, Dad? It's better than good, it's brilliant. Yeah, well done, Jess, that's amazing. Yeah, well done, Jess. But we ought to take them bunk beds before we go. Yeah, well done, Jess. 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 Yeah, well He's got the market job now. And people are really taking notice of his music. It's really positive. The only thing that's positive is you're the only one that's going to make any money. He sponges off you and he sponges off his mum and neither of yeah. you see it. Do you not believe in it, Pete? I'm not spending any time away from Kyle. Yeah, but he's still moving out, aren't Yeah, I'm still moving out, making the room short of care. That's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about this later. I'm not going to Leeds. I'm going to Manchester. And I bought Kyle a place at the crash. I know you're a different hopes, Dad, but you've got to stop picking on Scott. Tell you what, Jess, me and Kyle will come down to uni next week. I'll go around the student union and see if I can get some gigs. That's a great idea. <laughs> Better get the booze on then, eh? You pin your hopes up on me, Dad, cos I won't be having no kids. Hey, don't count your chickens just yet. I don't even like kids, I don't even like the lads. That's my tech teacher and that's about it. Oh, aye. What's his name, then? Miss Bert or something. Wow, oh, that's it. Okay. <laughs> Team one, team two, team one, team two, that's all. <laughs> right, Becky, I've got to be living here for another year. Oh, you're joking. No, I'm not. So, you're going to have to move downstairs because I need the room and I ain't sharing with you. What? And then, once it's born, I'll let you babysit. Three times a week, because you love babies, don't you? Mate, that's it. I've had it up to you with you, Janine. You're not pushing me around any longer. I stick up for you, I look after you and what do I get back? You think you can have me sleeping on the couch and babysitting? Think again. If you're lucky, I'll babysit for you now and again. Now and again. Not three times a week, but now and again. And if you want me to babysit for you, it has to be really nice to me, otherwise I won't do it. If you're going to be living here for another year, things have to change. I've had it up to you with you, you selfish bitch. Let's hope when this baby's born, you think about somebody else other than yourself for a change. I'm going to football practice now. See ya. Becky? Becky?